Earlier today, in Vienna, Austria, Eliud Kipchoge ran the first sub two hour marathon in history. Kipchoge ran at an average four minutes and 34 seconds per mile pace for 26.2 miles to cross the line in one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds, smashing through a barrier that has stood unrelenting for more than 100 years. This is a big deal. Marathon times throughout history have improved as equipment, nutrition and training got better. But as humans approach the two hour mark, we must ask ourselves, what is the limit? I mean, there must be a limit. There must be a time in which no one defined as human would ever be able to run. It would be pointless to try and run a marathon in say five seconds. That's obviously not doable. 30 minutes, that's crazy, that's difficult even in a car. So where is the limit? In 1991, Michael Joyner, an undergraduate studying physiology, published a paper stating that if a runner had perfect running economy and a huge VO2 max, that's the amount of oxygen you can use at one time, fitter people tend to use more, and an enormous lactate threshold, that's how hard you can work before lactate starts building up in your blood, that in theory, in perfect conditions, they'd be able to run a marathon in just under a 158. So below two hours was possible, at least according to one paper. This was the first time any sort of science was applied to the limit for a marathon. And so began the arguments of whether this was actually achievable. A lot of the skepticism about a possible sub two hour time comes from the athletes themselves. Paul Terga, after running a world record time of 2.04.55 in 2003, said, I believe records are set to be broken and to fall lower is possible, but what remains impossible is running a marathon under two hours. The interesting thing about barriers similar to this is that once it's been done once, it seems to happen almost routinely. The four minute mile was considered by many impossible. John Landy is quoted as saying it was an impossible brick wall. Once it was done, however, he claimed the world record for himself by running at a 358. Now over 1400 people have achieved this feat. 10 of them were in high school. However, shaving 98 seconds off the current world record for a marathon is an extraordinary leap forward for the sport. Many thought the sub two hour time would come after a series of two ones, two hours 30 seconds, two hours 15 seconds. But this, this catapults road running into the realm of sub two hour marathons in one fell swoop. So who is this guy? Well, simply put, Eliud Kipchoge is the greatest marathon runner ever. Olympic marathon champion, world record holder, winning 11 of the 12 marathons he's raced. What's cool about Eliud is that he wasn't always a road runner. He comes from a track background, winning bronze and silver medals in the 2004 and 2008 Olympic Games for the 5,000 meters, a much shorter distance than a marathon. However, for the London 2012 Olympics, he failed to make the Kenyan Olympic team. This may have been the end for his running career had he not pivoted on his failure and made the switch to road running, marathons. With the change of style, Kipchoge found his stride and so began the era of domination. Just look at this record. He wins everything by huge margins too. At the 2015 Berlin Marathon, his shoes fell apart, causing him to run with no insoles for 20 miles, and he still destroyed everyone and ran a 204. Last year, he completely obliterated the world record by running a 201.39. That's the biggest dent anyone's put in the world record for half a century. In 2017, Eloid took part in the Nike Breaking 2 project. The aim here was specifically to break two hours for a marathon. Featuring a super flat course and pace runners, three men attempted it. Eloid ran fastest, coming agonizingly close with a two hour and 25 second time. That's just one second off the pace per mile. This attempt confirmed to Kipchoge that it was possible to run a sub two hour marathon. So how did he do it? 
Firstly, Eloide was in top form this year, setting the world record last year for a marathon and winning the London Marathon this year. The numbers from his training camp are almost unbelievable. Up to 140 miles a week. That's a cumulative total of around five marathons every week for months on end. All the team did was eat, sleep and run. They trained on hard packed roads in Kenya too, twisty, bumpy roads at an altitude of 2,400 metres where the air is thin. This trains the body to cope with lower oxygen levels, improving his performance at a much lower altitude in Vienna. And all that training isn't a joke because what he had to do is astonishing. Kipchoge ran at least a 4.35 per mile pace. That's 13.1 miles an hour. That doesn't really mean anything until you watch someone try to do this on a treadmill. At six miles an hour, I can talk comfortably. This is my 10,000 meter pace. At nine miles an hour, I can't talk without gasping for breath and I can feel my muscles starting to burn. And at 13.1 miles an hour, I'm almost at a full sprint, struggling to maintain my position on the treadmill. This is basically how I'd run the 100 meters. I start to fall back, and bail out. Dearie me! <sighs> Let's try that again now that I'm warmed up. That's around 30 seconds. That's all I can manage at this pace. When we asked experienced runners to try, people who have run marathons, the result is similar. The speed is reachable, but it's an entirely different movement to how most people run marathons. The most anyone was able to do was one minute 10 seconds at this pace. And Kipchoge ran at least that speed for over 26 miles. He was supported by a team of pace runners. They were there to help Kipchoge run at a very steady pace. Any deviation would likely hurt his time, but also to offer support and shelter him from the wind. They were changed out regularly to ensure everyone was as fresh as possible. These guys weren't just regular people either. Everyone here is an elite athlete, Olympic medalists, world champions, past rivals, all united to keep Kipchoge on pace to make history. The group followed a pace car to ensure they were exactly on pace. Cruise control just wasn't accurate enough here. Remember, we're trying to shave just 0.36% off the time set in Monza for the Breaking 2 project. That requires accuracy. A fully electric car, so there are no emissions for the runners, used transponders to work out distance and pace. This gave an accuracy of 0.2 meters over the entire marathon distance. The runners knew exactly where to run because the car projects a laser guide showing them the pace line. The attempt was made in Vienna because it is cool and calm in October and is only one hour behind Kipchoge's time zone in Kenya, meaning his body clock will be in sync. The Prater Park has an exceptionally straight and long stretch of road and it's very, very flat. The circuit was run 4.4 times to account for the marathon distance. Every detail was accounted for to ensure performance, even the way water was delivered via bike rather than grabbing it off a table. Once Kipchoge had taken a drink, the bottle was measured to find out how much he had consumed to ensure that he was perfectly hydrated. So, the run itself.
things off. From the get-go, Elliot was exactly on pace, showing no signs of any issues. His consistency was remarkable. In the first half of the run, his slowest mile was just three seconds off the pace. He was coming in around 10 seconds below the target. He ran a half marathon in just under one hour. In fact, the only part of the whole event where there was any concern was around the halfway point where he fell off pace by a fraction. He's kind of falling off a little bit. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see. Um, hopefully he tucks right back in there with Matt. But really, there was no drama here. He sped up towards the end. His stride, perfect, always. His pace, relentless. For the last mile, his pace runner stripped off to leave Elliot to continue alone to the end. Kipchoge practically sprinted at a 4.26 per mile pace and crossed the line with the greatest roar from a crowd I have ever heard. The clock read one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Stuff like this doesn't happen often. It takes someone like Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, or Eliud Kipchoge to redefine what is possible for humans by achieving something that people only speculated was possible. And by breaking through that barrier, the next generation of runners are born into a new era of the sport, the sub two hour marathon era. What is the limit? Perhaps Kipchoge's time is it, perhaps not. Only time will tell.